title of the message right now is On the Road, but Off the Path. And this is a topic that has been on my heart for the longest time. Ever since I became a believer and I read the story of the disciples that walked on the road to Emmaus. Because I came to faith just a few miles away from the road to Emmaus. In fact, where I was you know, born again, that place where I received the Lord into my heart after, of course, I saw the Jesus film. And I, I got kicked out of that house of my foster family. And I moved to live with my friends. Literally, I could just walk outside and start walking on the road to Emmaus. This is where I lived. And the road to Emmaus is still there. And it's important that you know that this is not a fairy tale. This is not something abstract. This is a real thing. And if you don't believe me, you may want to believe someone who actually preserved some ancient map that goes back to the 4th century AD. And I would like to show you that map. It's a map that, um, can, can I get the map itself? This map, believe it or not, was drawn originally by a Roman soldier. And it was 8 meters, or 7 meters, almost 7 meters wide. It's about uh, 6.82 meters wide, 34 centimeters tall. And it was the entire Roman Empire from Britain on this side to India on that side. Of course, what we see here is a small portion of the area of the land of Israel of that time. And the reason why I wanted to show you is that right where you see Jerusalem, where they call it Aelia Capitolina, there is a mounte, a mounte which is a mouse of today. And if you move ahead on a floor of a church in Madaba in Jordan, one more slide, you can clearly see that next to Jerusalem, there is, Jerusalem is over there, and right there you can see it's called Nicopolis, the city of victory. That was the Greek name of that city. We also have maps from the 1800s, 1800s, from 1866 to 1877, and in that map, Amawas, and it's all pointing at a specific place with a specific village that was a Jewish one, and it's definitely something that is mentioned in the Bible. The problem is that there are three different places that are identified as Emmaus in, the world, in, in, in Israel. And, and the, the problem is that two of them are following one version of the New Testament, which is saying that it was 60 stadium, where the others are saying 160 stadiums. So, um, but the ones that are mentioning 160 are fewer, but they're the more original and more authentic ones, such as Codex Sinaiticus. So my point is, there's a real place. And there's a real road. And there's a real village. And we found the real tombs of real Jews. And that place has been a place where battles of Judah's Maccabee against the armies of the Greek in, in 165 BC. And that's the place where there was a great victory over them. Emmaus was raised, by the way, and burned down by the Romans after Jewish attack on, on the garrison in 4 BC. And in 66 AD, rebuilt Emmaus, became the town of Top Toparchy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a village that was there, and we have a road that led to the village. It was a Jewish place before it was a Greek city of victory, and before it became a Christian place, an Episcopal seat. Later on, of course, today we have an archaeological digs 
that unearthed the site, but this whole place is all about the story from Luke chapter 24. Like, let's take a look at that story together. Now behold, two of the disciples were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles, again, the seven miles is based on the 60 stadiums, from Jerusalem, and they talked together on, of all these things which had happened. So it was, while they conversed and reasoned, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so that they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? So two disciples left Jerusalem. You can, by the way, if you need to turn on the lights now, it's fine. I just need to see the people earlier. I'm okay now. So the two disciples walked together from Jerusalem. And they're walking all the way to a village that is far from the city. And they are conversing with one another. And they are obviously not happy. This is Sunday morning. This is after the angel already said that he's not there because he's alive. This is after the tomb has been declared empty. And this is after the events of that Passover. They left Jerusalem knowing that the tomb is empty. And they are walking. And they are talking. And they are sad. And Jesus appears. Hi guys. Como esta ca? So, uh, how do you say kababayan? Ka kababayan? Kababayan. They were his kababayan. He's asking them, why? What are you talking about? Why are you so sad? And they look at him. And he says, Da. Where are you? Where do you live? In what planet do you live? The things that happen in Jerusalem. That's what we're talking about. And Jesus is asking, what things? And they say, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth. Isn't that interesting to, to walk with someone and to have him talking about you and he has no clue that it's you? And Jesus says, keep talking. <laughs> the things. And they said, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem and you, you don't know those things which happen? What things? <laughs> the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet. Look, they're using past tense. Who was a prophet. Mighty indeed and word before God and all people. And how the chief priests and all the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we, and watch this, we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. They're like, we lost on that bet. For three years... We've been putting all of our money on that person as the Messiah. For three years, we left our families, our friends, our social life, our, our income source, whatever it is. For three years, we were led to believe that he is going to redeem Israel. That he's a prophet, that he's the anointed one, the Mashiach. And make no Make no mistake, they still don't understand who Jesus is. They still don't understand the deity of Jesus. They think that he's the man whom God sent to save Israel, Mashiach. You, you've got to understand, for the Jews, the cross is an offense. Because in the book of Deuteronomy, 
end in the book of Leviticus, the curse is on the tree. The curse of God is on the tree. You cannot. This is something Jews never practiced because it's so gruesome. It's so not. It's, it's something reserved for a cursed person. And the Messiah on a tree? What a disappointment. And probably they were talking and they were Jewish even in their emotions. And Jesus is, you know, he's cool. What are you talking about? And they're saying, that's not the end. You want to know what else happened? And Jesus, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what happened? Well, well, let me tell you something. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. And when they did not find the body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who, who said that he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. But him, they did not see. So they're telling Jesus that he is not in the tomb. And they, they should have heard from him now, Da, I'm standing in front of you. And they're angry. And they're sad. And they're disappointed. They're embarrassed. When you see Jews in their emotional mode, man. And Jesus is looking at them. Hmm. Oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. What did he just say? Your problem is that you don't believe. And your problem is that you don't believe in what? Say the word all. Say it again. Say it one time, but loud. Oh, that's the thing. The Jewish people in those days carefully selected what they want to believe about the Messiah. And very, very, very beautifully ignore the things that don't suit the figure and the image of the Messiah in their head. Isaiah 53. Mm, let's not go there. No, 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 no. Coming as a king. Yeah. Riding on a horse. Yeah. Behold, your king is riding on a donkey. No, 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 no. Do you understand? It's not that they didn't hear the entire word. They chose what they want to believe in. What fits their theory, their image of the Messiah. And chose to ignore all the rest. And they did not believe all the rest. And if they read everything... Some things they believe and some things they did not. And by the way, which are the books that Jesus is telling them that they are ignoring the most? The prophets. See, Bible Prophecy Conference is so important because this is exactly the part people who call themselves disciples totally ignore. And Jesus is on the road to Emmaus, is telling his disciples. It's not like Jesus comes to the rabbis, oh foolish ones, or to the Pharisees, or to the Sadducees. This is, oh foolish ones, to supposedly his church, his followers, his disciples. 
This is about all of us. And look at this most beautiful verse. And beginning in Moses. And all the prophets. He expounded to them in all the scriptures. Say all. Say all. In all the scriptures. The things concerning himself. So they're walking angry. And Jesus is telling them. So let's start with the very beginning. Huh? How about that guys? In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And they're like looking at one another probably. Okay. Where do you go from there? And God says there let there be light. And. But God created the sun and the moon and the stars only in the fourth day. So who was the light of the world in the first day? Oh. Okay, go on. And then he comes to Genesis 3. And then he comes to Genesis 6. And then he comes to Genesis 11. And then he comes to Abraham. And then he comes to by faith that he was justified. And then you continue on and on and on and on. And then they realize, man. We didn't know all of this. In fact, we heard it somewhere, but... I didn't even think that it's literal. They didn't really let facts confuse them. The angels said Jesus is alive and they act as if he's dead. They're angry, confused and very sad. And if that's not enough, take a look at this. It was important to Jesus, not just to tell them that all those things had to have happened. It was important to him when he was still in the three years of his ministry. It was important to him to fulfill all the things that the prophets had written about him. It's not like he just remembered, oh, I need to do this, 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 and this on the road to Emmaus. All throughout the three years of his ministry. And therefore, likewise, it was important for the writers of the Gospels to emphasize that he did these things in order to fulfill that which was written by the prophets. Matthew 1, 22 to 23. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall conceive... Or shall be with a child and bear a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel. God is with us. Obviously Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. We all know that. And Matthew 2. When he arose he took the young child and his mother by night. And departed for Egypt. And he was there until the death of Herod. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the, uh, by the Lord through the prophet Hosea. By the way said out of Egypt I called my son. And if that's not enough in Matthew 4. Now when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison. He departed to Galilee. And leaving Nazareth he came and dwelt in Capernaum. Which is by the sea. In the regions of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. And from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, What? Repent. That's the word that is banned from 80% of the churches will ride today. Don't talk about repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand, he says. And in Matthew 8, when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying... He himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. The writer of the gospel acknowledges that Jesus did these things as a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. Isaiah 53. 
And in Matthew 13, for whoever has, to him more will be given, and he, he will be, have abundance. But whoever does not have, even that he has will be taken from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, saying, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and will not perceive, and on and on. He is saying, the prophet Isaiah said that, and now it's being fulfilled. Matthew 21, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and caught with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has a need for them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet Zechariah. Tell the daughter of Zion, by the way, behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey and a colt, the foal of a donkey. Matthew 27, then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders saying, I've sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? You see to it. And then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went to hang himself. But the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury because they are the price of blood. And they consulted together and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. And therefore that field has been called the field of blood in this, to this day. That was then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of him who was priced, whom they of the children of Israel priced. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you understand. Even the crucifixion and the resurrection, all of that, that all, that it might be that the prophets will be fulfilled. And that's why we're going back to Luke 24. Jesus said to them, O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe that which the prophets have spoken. This is a very serious accusation directed towards the disciples, not towards the unbelieving world. And I believe today is the same exact thing. The church is afflicted with new revelations, new things that are not even in the Bible. Or we only choose the things that sounds good to us and we leave the things that don't match what we believe should happen. I heard that the appointed son is now elevated to an appointed father and the vacancy of the son is now open. I mean, it's vacant. Deepak, no, no. Oh, he's the disappointed son. The, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And now I understand. Ladies and gentlemen, a million people follow him. A million, maybe more. Davao is now the new Jerusalem, I heard. Not that I have anything against Davao. It's a beautiful place. But this is not the new Jerusalem. The last time I checked what the new Jerusalem looked like. He might have beautiful gardens... But uh, what about the pearls and diamonds and gold as pavement? Uh, that he has in his vault. Ladies and gentlemen, the new Jerusalem will have no ruler that has two private jets and three helicopters. Ladies and gentlemen, the topic that is now being talked about by Jesus is the lack of faith in what the prophets wrote. And I want to urge all of you 
Whenever you start obsessing over non-scriptural illusions, new revelations or dreams, it brings you to the lack of acceptance of the scriptures as they are, thus leading you to question biblical authority altogether. Israel is now being afflicted what, by what America and the rest of the world is being afflicted as a, a new movement called the New Apostolic Reformation. People who say that there has to be new generation of what was first century apostles in order to restore our world back to the book of Acts, they must be apostles in Jerusalem, they must be Jewish in blood, and only when they will be having their status restored, and Jerusalem will be back the place of authority, then we will prepare the place for Jesus to come back to earth. And the last time I checked, it is Jesus who said, I go to prepare a place for you. Not you, please prepare a place for me. There's a lack of basic understanding that all which the prophets have written must be fulfilled. And does not depend on any new revelation. No one can wake up in the morning and, said, and say, God spoke to me and he's changing his plan. Well, someone can say that. He, he stopped an earthquake, but he didn't stop the volcano. I'm not sure what else. <laughs> Listen to me. The word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 2 Corinthians 11:4 says for if he who comes pre for if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received or a different gospel which you have not accepted you may well put up with it 2 Corinthians 11 12 to 15, but what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder... For Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is, not, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according, according to their works. There are people who will call themselves apostles of Christ. Christ never knew them. And they preach another gospel. And another reality. And it is inconsistent with the word of God. And if there is one thing that I want you to walk away from this conference this evening back home. Is that there is nothing that can change, replace or be added to this book. One of the biggest problems of the church today is that this is not enough. It's not enough. So we need more experiences. We need more things. And before you know it, the experience become what you believe in and not the word of God anymore. Galatians 1, 6-9 I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you into, in the grace of Christ to a different gospel which is not Another, but there are some who trouble you and want to uh, um, 
pervert the gospel of Jesus. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be what? In the Greek, anathema. Accursed. So, so no one from any Davao city can say an angel came to visit me and told me that now I am this and I am that. Because the Bible says even if an angel from heaven supposedly came to tell you something, if it's a different gospel and if it's not Jesus the Son, then he must be accursed. Anathema. Galatians 1, 6-9 As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be what? Accursed. 11 to 12, but I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came what? What? Through what? Through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul the Apostle was not a student of the word inside a Bible school led by a certain bishop or apostle. Paul is an apostle and he is one of the founders of the church. And the Bible says that the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And Christ is the chief cornerstone. These apostles received directly from Jesus. They saw Jesus. They heard Jesus. They they were there physically when things happen. And therefore, they wrote it. You see, the apostles of the first century wrote the Bible. So you cannot tell me that there is going to be a new generation of the apostles of the first century. Because if you say that, you say, well, they are going to write the Bible. We are the church. We are not the apostles and the prophets. Now, is the gift of prophecy is still active? Absolutely. Do people still being sent as apostles? Absolutely. But you don't call yourself an apostle of the first century and start the new apostolic reformation dragging people to believe that it's up to us when Jesus comes back because we must first prepare the world for him to come back when Jesus already told us what the world is going to look like. And he actually says, don't worry, I'm going to come. I'm going to prepare a place for you. It's not here. You will not need a bypass road from the airport to this place anymore. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Where? In my father's house. There's many mentions. The Bible doesn't say in Davao City there are many mentions. It says in my father's house there's many mentions. If it wasn't so, I would have told you. And I'm coming back to what? To what? Receive you. And you don't receive me. You're not waiting here, celebrating here, and wah, 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 and then wah, 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 and then he comes. No. The, at the appointed time, which is, by the way, it's a, an appointed time. Appointed time means God knows. At the appointed tum, time, the virgin was conceived. At the appointed time, Jesus was born. At the appointed time, he will get off his throne once again. And the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians that he will descend. We will have to ascend. He will have to descend. And we will meet the Lord where? In the air. 
And some of you are like, uh, I don't think I can fly with this one. That's why 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. Not all of us are going to sleep, which means to die, but all of us are going to what? Change. Look at you. All of you will receive a new body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of you like, uh, what's wrong with my body today? I mean, I like it. I mean, I go to the gym five times a day and, uh, and uh, I eat well. I exercise. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I'm sorry. Not that I encourage you to not be having healthy lifestyle, but uh, the healthy, healthy, li healthy lifestyle is good for you while you're still here. You're not taking this body with you up to heaven. This is a sinful body that is corrupted and one must wear incorruption in order to be translated into heaven. The Bible says in John 7, Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. He who speaks from him for himself seeks his own glory. Anyone, anyone that is preaching something else is not seeking the salvation of the people. He's seeking his own glory. Anyone who is preaching another gospel wants wealth, wants his own, you know, the pride of, of, of everything that he wants to be famous. There's a pastor, I'm not going to tell you his name. There's a pastor from America, from the great state of Texas, who was ranked number one in his wealth with some unbelievable number of hundreds of millions that he has. He was angry. You know why? Because they didn't, they were not accurate. He had more. He wasn't angry because he was in the list. Hey, I have more than that. Hmm. Romans 16, 17. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary. What? To the doctrine which you learn and what? Avoid them. These people are the best in social media. They're the best in TV. They're the best in radio. They want the attention. And everybody, instead of avoiding them, they give them all the attention. Avoid them. 1 Timothy 4. Till I come, give attention to what? Reading of the scriptures, by the way, it's public reading of the scriptures, exhortation to what? Doctrine! There is no way that doctrine can be compromised for the sake of unity. We just heard, we, 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 were, we were traveling by a church in, in Manila, and what was the sign? This is the year of, 2020 is the year of uh, uh, ecumenism. And dialogue, inter-religious dialogue. And of what? Interfaith dialogue. And, and, and it's not about doctrine. We all worship the same God. Let's hold hands and sing Kumbaya. What are you going to talk about? If Jesus did not come to abolish the law of the prophets but to fulfill them, then what is your problem? Jesus did not offer a new thing. He came to fulfill the requirements of God. There is nothing in the Word of God that is not good or true. It is us that cannot make it to the level of holiness, and therefore Jesus had to come and fulfill it for us. He didn't bring us something that is completely out of God's heart until then. God is love even in Genesis chapter 3. 
because he should have killed Adam and Eve and he didn't. Hey, he promised them that if they eat, they will surely die. Remember? Did he kill them? No. He already exercised then and there his amazing um, um, I guess uh, grace, love, compassion. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. For assuredly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one title will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. The scribes and the Pharisees are trying to establish their own righteousness. That's what Paul said. Unless you understand that you are unable to save yourself. By the way, that's the problem of the Jews with the cross. The first and the most important problem of a Jew with the cross is that the cross is not them. It's there. Therefore, everything is on the cross. And it is nothing that they can do to save themselves. It's a problem. When you are religious... And people gather different verses and ignoring their context and, and they have an inaccurate picture of the Messiah. And that's exactly what happened to the Jewish people in the first century when they confused what the first coming of the Messiah should be with the second coming of the Messiah. And therefore they are waiting for him until today. He should come riding on a horse. He should destroy our enemies. He should reign from Jerusalem. There should be a temple. There should be a resurrection from the dead. All of that every Jew is waiting for. He just missed his first coming. Because he never believed all that the prophets have said. The disciples who walked with Jesus lacked the understanding of the need that prior to the Messiah redeeming Israel, he must first suffer, be killed, then resurrect on the third day. Even Peter, in, in, if you remember, Peter rebuked Jesus for saying that. Peter, who acknowledged him two minutes ago, you're the son of the living God. And he felt so great and so important. He was walking like that and you know, you know the father revealed that to me. <laughs> Not to you, but to me. If you want to talk to him, come to me first. And then Jesus starts saying, from that time he began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem. Say must. He must. I want you to remember two words from this session. All has to be fulfilled and must. Because he must go to Jerusalem and must suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes. And must be killed and must be raised on the third day. But Peter didn't see that that way. He took Jesus aside. Jeez, Peter is like the fisherman from Galilee. Hey uh, Jesus, come over here please. What are you talking about? Don't talk like that. To the Messiah. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm banking on you to be the king, to ride a horse, to, to, to defeat the Romans. Far it be from you, Lord, that this shall not happen to you. You're, you're not supposed to die. You're not, you're, what is this? What are you talking about? And Jesus said to him, get, you want to change things? You know who wants to change things? You, want, you know who wants me not to die for you, Peter? Satan. So get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. 
I didn't come to this world for the first time to sit and reign while seeing you rotting in your sin. I came to give my life for you so you will have eternal life, Peter. You are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men. Be careful. Don't be mindful of the things of men. Remember, the lack of understanding of the enormous suffering that is approaching Israel and that will eventually lead to their salvation is a portion of these modern day apostles. These apostles are saying that Israel is going to have great revival and eventually that will lead to the return of Jesus. Where the Bible says that there will be great tribulation that is called Jacob's trouble that has not been seen since they became a nation. But the Bible says God will eventually rescue them from that. But they will only as a nation receive Jesus when they will see him coming back to earth. The Bible says in Zechariah, and they look at him whom they pierce and they will cry. Jeremiah talked about that. We've heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. See, those new apostles say everything is going to be better and better, greater and greater. Peace and safety, while we all know that this is wrong. Jeremiah says a voice of trembling, of fear, of not of peace. And, 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 and now, and see whether a man is ever in labor with a child. So why do I see every man with his hand on his loins like a woman in labor? I'm a bad actor. I don't know how a woman in his labor is. But all you women, when you went in labor, imagine the men doing the same now. It's excruciating pain. And, and, and all faces turn pale. We don't take pain like women. You're stronger than we are. That's why God gave you the birth pangs, not us. We would all die on the table. It's true. Men cannot take as much pain as women can. All the women are like, <laughs> and they're like, told you. And he's like, oh, sorry. And then he said, alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it, and it is the time of Jacob's trouble. Thankfully, he shall be saved of it. Hosea 5.15, Hosea, as, as, as he speaks the words of Jesus, I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their offense. Then they will seek my face. How? When? How will the Jewish people are going to seek his face again? It, what will lead them to repent? Is it great things? In their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. Some profess having new revelations on the need to restore the status of the apostles as the key to the salvation of Israel and the return of Jesus back to earth. And that's the new apostolic reformation movement. And I say to you, the people will be so disappointed. Disappointed. The disappointment, the confusion, the anger, and the sadness of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus while the tomb was already empty and the angel had said to them, he's alive and resurrected, would be nothing compared to the disappointment of the people who put their hopes in these new apostles. I want to tell you folks, I know personally people who believed that Jesus is coming back when there was a blood moon. And Jesus is coming back when there is a, a Shemitah year. And Jesus is coming back when there was a, a signs in the sky of, of the uh, Revelation 12. And Jesus is coming back when there is going to be certain fulfillment of... Listen guys. They take things out of context. They th there are blood moons every decade, every almost every year around the world. 
And these people are so disappointed. I spoke to them. At the time, there was a, a company that came to Israel to film a movie on the sign of Revelation 12 that happened, I don't know, two years ago. And, and everybody was sure Jesus is coming back or something great is going to happen. And I'm the only person that spoiled the party. Because says, guys, we need to look at the word. No one knows the day. No one knows the hour. We're not to look for those type of things. We are to be prepared and ready just like Paul was 2,000 years ago when Paul said... The dead in Christ will rise first and we that are alive and well, we shall join them and we will be caught up in the air to meet the Lord in the cloud. Every Christian should say that. Can the words of the prophets be something that a new spiritual revelation can cancel? Proverbs says, do not add to his word lest, the rebu lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. Revelation 22, for I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him a plague, the plagues that are in, written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book of prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. In other words, people, it's not that you're going to lose your salvation. You may not be even saved. If all you do is following and believing the things that are not the word of God. Can we skip several events that the prophets wrote that must happen? The rapture of the church, the tribulation, the return of Jesus with the saints to earth, the national salvation of Israel, the millennial kingdom, the great white throne of judgment, the new Jerusalem. There are things that must happen happen they will happen in God's time and God's order and it is not upon us to change them and skip some of them because they don't sound so beautiful I'm sorry the disciples didn't when they heard that Jesus has to die it didn't sound beautiful but he had to tell them that to their face they must know the truth and it's very interesting because when Jesus, after his resurrection, met them again, and, and, and when he talked to them, one of the first things that he gathered them all, before he departed, he said, I need to explain to you, I had to suffer. The suffering is the one thing you don't understand. The death is one thing you don't understand. I am still Jesus. I am Yeshua. I'm your salvation. I'm the one that you walked with for three years. It's not someone else. I had to die. I had to suffer. It's not sexy. It's not beautiful. It's not great. It's not something that everyone... It's the reality. You're sinners. You deserve death. And I had to suffer and die instead of you. If there was any other solution, let's see. Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, if it's possible, take that cup from me. But he realized it's not. Not my will, but thy will be done. Aren't you happy that Jesus died for you? Is the role of the church today to prepare the kingdom of God here on this world? Or are we to expect him to take us to the place he prepared for us? You know, some of them say, well, but Jesus himself in the prayer says, Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, but why did Jesus preach about the kingdom of God here on earth even over 2,000 years ago. He didn't say, or 2,000 years from now, there will be a generation of apostles and they are going to bring the kingdom of God on earth. He spoke about the kingdom of God even then. Why? Luke 17. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you.
When Jesus is in you, when you believe in him, you are already having the status of sons and daughters and you are already promised that you will reign with him. It's in us. We are not to show and prepare a place where we take over seven mountains and we are going to prepare the world for him. No, you cannot see it. It's in you. Galatians 5, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, the outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. He's not talking about earthly kingdom that we prepare for him. God will bring him back. To prepare a kingdom on earth. I've heard. Well I'm, I'm, I'm not going to continue with this one. I will just conclude with the last slide. Once you go back to the scriptures. And observe them in their entirety. And in their context. Your understanding of what is to come. Becomes biblically sound. And won't fail you with the disappointments and confusion that comes with false teachings such as those of the new apostolic reformation such of those of apollo kiboloi such of those of many false teachers and false apostles and false messiahs and false anointed ones be careful test the spirits and always always have the word as a light unto your path father we thank you so much for your word your word is truth sanctify us by that truth we thank you that we are on the road and now through your word we can also be on the right path in the right direction. Father, I thank you that when the two disciples understood how wrong they were, they didn't even wait. Even that it was a nighttime and too dangerous, they turned around and walked back to Jerusalem, full of assurance of their salvation, full of understanding of the scriptures, full of victory, full of so much joy and happiness. They couldn't wait to go back to the upper room and share with the rest of the disciples what they have seen. So Father, if we were on the road but off the path, if we were following some other person, if we were following some wrong doctrines, if we were really, innocently maybe even, preparing or trying to think that it's up to us to prepare a place for you here, Father. Bring us back to your word. Back to your promises. Back to all that the prophets have written and said. May we not skip, deduct, erase, or add anything to your word. We bless your name from Davao this morning and we thank you in the name of the Holy One of Israel, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Emmanuel, in the name of the Prince of Peace, in the name of Sar Shalom, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, our salvation, in the name that is above all name, in the name of the only one by whose name we can be healed and saved, in the name of Jesus we pray, and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen.